and he literally spat on her face and I was like, iconic, we stand. I'm obsessed. I am angry and I feel betrayed and I am sad. And Fi, being the baddest bitch that she is, puts out the fire and she's like, nah, I don't want it. I was fooled. Hello, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another reading vlog where I'm gonna be reading The Faithless Hawk. So, The Faithless Hawk is the second and last book in the Merciful Crow series, which is a dark fantasy young adult series. And in this book, we follow the characters after the aftermath of book one as they try to dethrone Rusana. And I have done a reading vlog for book one, which I will link in the description. And also, I love the cover of this book. Can we just talk about that for a second? Like, it's gorgeous. And I just want to say as well that this vlog has spoilers for what happens in this book. And having said all that, let's go into the reading footage. Okay, so I have finished part one of the book and the first line was Fi was taking too long to cut the girl's throat and I just loved the parallel with the beginning of book one which was Pa was taking too long to cut the boy's throats. So it is believed that when the gods die they were reborn again as witches to lead the castes that they founded and they go to the shrine to one of the dead gods which is called Little Witness, and there was a girl there who was basically the embodiment of that god. And she tells Fi that the crows used to have a birthright, but it was stolen. And Fi needs to get it back, and the only way for her to get it back is to keep her oath. But Fi was like, I already kept my oath, like, I delivered Jasimir to his allies, he's safe, that's the oath, that's done. But Little Witness keeps telling her that no, she needs to keep the oath. And so Fi doesn't really know what she's talking about or what to do. Also, we learn that the king has died and the queen, Rusana, is blaming Fi and basically all of the crows for the king's death because she's telling the people that he died of the plague. But she did not call the crows and she said that basically they could handle it on their own. They did not need the crows. And so more villages are starting to do that. But the truth is, they cannot handle it. They cannot deal with the people who are sick from the plague. So whole villages are getting infected and people are dying and villages have to be burnt. And Fai and her crows and some other clans of crows are at one of those villages, which is just overrun with the plague. And so basically the people who were dead from that village started... Not say, I'm not gonna say coming to life because they were still dead, but their corpses were being used and they were being, they were moving and they were attacking them. But then Tavin got there and since he's half phoenix, he could use the fire to kill those corpses. And so he did. And then they joined Jasimir's procession to get back to the castle, the palace, whatever. Also, I continue to feel nothing between Fai and Tavin. So sorry. Okay, so then we learned that Rusana was actually controlling one of the people working for Jasimir's allies. And he didn't know he was being controlled because Rusana happened to have a strand of his hair. And so then they were talking, and I have like a screenshot here, and they were saying that according to Swan records, her father, Rusana's father, was a vulture. But the Swan rituals should have guaranteed that she'd be a swan and a similar ritual should have guaranteed she'd lose her birthright when she married into the phoenixes 
but they suspected that she learned how to not let that happen. And basically, she was born a witch with a dual birthright, just like Tavin, who has a birthright from the phoenixes and from the hawks. And so the queen had a swan's ability to manipulate people, like the thing with the hair, and also the vulture's commands over skin. So she was the one who was controlling the corpses. So that's fun. And so then Rosanna attacked their camp and she was basically controlling like pretty much everyone except for like Fi and Tavin and Chasimir, I think. And she says that she wants to unite the whole nation against one common enemy, which is basically two enemies, which is like the plague and the crows combined. And she made that preposition to Jasmir to like rule with her and he was like, no way, no thank you, goodbye. And he literally spat on her face and I was like, iconic, we stand. And then she made the same offer to Tavin, telling him that he would finally have the power to protect the people that he cares about. And he accepted. And I am angry. And somehow Fi managed to escape with some of her crows and Jasmir didn't, but Fai couldn't really like go back to get him and I am angry, I am sad, I am feeling a lot of things. But also, I'm definitely loving this because I mean it's making me feel things, bad things, but also I love it and like the pacing is perfect and it's so intense and a lot of things are happening and I'm obsessed. And I just love Fai so much, and I also love Jasimir so much. And also, like, I feel betrayed by Tavin because I didn't like him with Fai, but I like him, like, just as him, and I feel betrayed. But also, like, I understand why he accepted to do that, but also I am angry and I feel betrayed, and I am sad, and yeah. But anyway, I am loving this and I will update once I read part two. finished part two and the first thing that happens is that Pa convinces Fai to go get Jasimir and to fight back against Rusana and also Tavin. And so Koda who is a spy and Vimo who's one of the vultures that was hunting her in book one join her because none of them want Rusana on the throne either. And so what they need to do is to prove that Rusana is keeping Jasimir hidden and like imprisoned and that Tavin is not the true prince. And so once they were inside the palace, Fai used pigeon teeth, which is to like give luck, and she was able to find the place where Jasimir was being kept. But Tavin was there and he basically he found her, but she used peacock teeth as well to disguise herself, making her appear as a girl she had killed, like the one she killed in the beginning that of the book that the line was Fai was taking too long to cut the girl's throat, that's the girl. And her name is Niemi Sakar. And so she's pretending to be that girl. And after that, Koda suggests that Fai should use it to her advantage that she, or Niemi, has already caught Tavin's attention, so she should take advantage of that and try to get information from him. And she's not very thrilled about that idea, but they do need to get information, so she reluctantly agrees. Also, she reunites with Jasimir, and it was the cutest thing ever, and I just love them both so much, and I love their friendship so much. 
so it's time for Rosanna and Tavin, or Jasmir, but Tavin's coronation. And they basically have to ask permission of the Phoenix Gods, and then they have to also like the blessing of Umbra, who is one of the Phoenix ancestors who survived the plague. And basically, Jasmir and Rusana have to be on fire to prove that they don't burn because they're phoenixes. And so they're in the process of that. And Fi, being the baddest bitch that she is, puts out the fire. And then she creates sort of an illusion of a phoenix that kind of like destroys everything and scares people. And people are like now thinking that the phoenix gods don't approve of Rosanna and Jasimir, and that was so iconic. I just, I love Fi so much. Also, Fi still being the badass bitch that she is, she found the room where Rosanna was keeping the hair of the people she was controlling, and she set that on fire. So, I mean, she might have more hair stashed away somewhere, but that stash is gone. And while that was happening, and everybody was distracted with that, Coda released Jasmir from where he was being imprisoned. So while Fi tries to get information from Tavin, they go to the catacombs because Coda has heard people saying that there are strange sounds coming from the catacombs. So Fi asks, Fi pretending to be Niemi, asks Tavin pretending to be Jasmir to take her there. And he does take her there. And while they were in the catacombs, she touches Amber's caskets and she had sort of a vision. And in that vision, Amber was swearing an oath to give up the crown and become one of them and join them on the road as one of them. And we see that them are crows. And Amber did not keep that oath. So that is the oath that Fi has to keep in order to regain her birthright, or the crow's birthright. I'm loving this book so much. I remember saying, like during my reading vlog for book one saying that I was enjoying it, but I wasn't like obsessed. Well, I am obsessed now. I am really, really loving this. And I just, I love Fi so much. She is such a badass, so iconic and yeah, I just love her so much. And I just love Jasmir. He is adorable. And Jasmir and Fi are the best friendship. And I keep trying to sympathize with Tavin, like I'm trying. Because like I said in my first update, I understand why he took the deal, but also I can't. I'm just angry and uh, yeah. But in terms of the book itself, I'm loving it and I will do my last update when I finish it. Okay, so I have finished the book and at the end of my last update I said that the oath that Fi had to keep was Amber's oath and basically that means that Fi is Amber reborn which also means that she is actually the rightful queen of Sabor and that's what Jasmir points out and she's like, nah, I don't want it. So all around the palace, they start seeing people with the plague's mark or brand, how they call it. And those people should be like really sick and some of them even dead because the plague kills very quickly. But they just have the brand. They don't have really any symptoms, not even a fever. They're just branded. And it's spreading really fast, but like I said, people are not dying or even really getting sick. Also, Fai and Jasmir find a map that belongs to Rusana, and she has marked Crow Shrines. And she means to send the Oleander Gentry to those Crow Shrines. So Fai and Jasmir 
kind of mess up the maps, but they know that it's only a matter of time until Rosanna figures out what they did and fixes it again. And after that, Fai, pretending to be Miami, goes talk to Tavin, but he calls her Chief. So Tavin knows that it's Fai. And so Fai decides to use an owl's tooth because owls, like their birthright is memories. And so she wants to access Tavin's memories to see like what the hell's going on. And so basically Tavin and Coda had a plan that Tavin was going to sort of destroy Rusana from inside. Like he was gonna be a spy, he was gonna infiltrate her court and he was gonna destroy her from the inside while Coda did his part from the outside. And I was fooled. And I mean, so was Fai and Jasimir, but I was fooled. I mean, I am okay with that because that's the outcome that I wanted, but also, how dare they? And so they unmask Rusana and tell the people that she had imprisoned the real prince, Jasimir, and everything like turns to chaos and all the people that had the plague, Rusana turned them into like her dead skin things that she manipulates and uses and they were kind of attacking people and then there was like fire and everybody was sick but then the crows got there, like a bunch of crow clans got to the capital and like they sort of kind of handled the situation and they had to pretty much burn most of the city and also Tavin had the brand as well of the plague. And Fai basically finally discovered what the crow's birthright was. And here I have my screenshots because I never know how to explain things. And basically when the different birthrights were being assigned to different clans, what was said about the crows was that they valued dignity in all creatures and they just kind of took care of people when they were sick and they didn't care if people were kind or cruel or like if they were good or bad and that meant that they would be spared of the plague because the crows don't catch the plague that's why they're the ones who to deal with the people who are sick and they would be granted a gift and their gift would be the ability to spare others they're like basically their birthright is mercy and the only thing they would need would be a bone for every birthright and 12 crows who would welcome the sinner into their own. And so we know that Amber failed to keep her oath and it said that life after life, like every time she was reborn, because I think Coda mentioned that it was 13 times, but I might be wrong, and she failed to keep her oath in every single life. She had joined the crows but she had no crown to forsake and if the oath is not kept, bad things happen. And this time when Ambra was reborn in Fai, Fai now knows that she is the heir to the throne in a way, so she has a crown to forsake, which means she can finally keep her oath and she does keep her oath and the crows are given back their birthright, which means they can give mercy to people who are sick if they think they are worthy of their mercy and if that person joins the crows as one of their own. So they do that to Tavin and he is cured and he's gonna become a crow basically. And also Jasimir wants a council to rule Sabor instead of him being king. And that was at the end of the book basically like Fai and her crows including now Tavin went on their way but Jasimir is sure that he would call when he needed them and Fai was like, well, we won't always wait for a call and they're just adorable and it ended and I loved it. And like, yeah, I, Fai was such a badass and Jasimir is precious and Tavin is also a badass who had me fooled and I was just mind blown and yeah, I absolutely loved it and I think it's time to go into my final thoughts. Okay, so I love this book so much. And starting with the characters, like I usually do, I, like I love Fai in book one, but I just loved her even more in the second book because I feel like she was just extra badass 
and incredible and just perfect. So absolutely obsessed with Fi. She is 100% that bitch. Also, I loved Jasmir so much. Like in book one, I only started liking him in like the last part of the book. But here I just love him so much from the beginning and he is so precious and Fi and Jasmir's friendship is everything and just, yeah, obsessed. Also, Tavin, I spent most of the book like not liking him, like being angry, but then I realized that I was wrong because I had been fooled by him and it turns out that I actually do love him as well, just like I did in book one. So there is that. On the other hand, I still don't care about Tavin and Fai's relationship. I'm not mad about it, I just don't care. And I was, there was sort of like the hint of a ship between Jasmir and Koda, and I was like actually shipping them, but then we realized that Koda was lying to them. So I was like, and sure, you know, like he had his reasons to lie and he was like actually helping them but he still lied and hid things so I'm just like do I still ship them? I don't know but in terms of the magic system and like birthright thing that I raved about in book one still really interesting and we got to discover more things about it so that was very interesting as well and still fascinating to me like it's a really cool magic system and the plot itself was incredible and I thought it was really more intense than book one in my opinion and it was very fast-paced and I just loved it very very much. I had a great time reading this book, it gave me all the feels and I gave it five stars. And so I think this is everything for this week's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, give it a like and subscribe. And I will talk to you next time. Bye!